Now, what are the new rules of investing? And if you haven't been paying attention, things have changed. You know, rates are higher, inflation is doing what it's doing. There's all kinds of changes happening right now in the market. And this is the way the financial uh, investing space goes. Things just can perpetually change. And so you've heard these rules, right? You got to diversify. You got to invest for the long haul. You got to buy the dips. You got to own real estate. Well, all of these may not necessarily be true anymore. And a lot of them actually just are not true anymore because the rules have changed. So we're gonna go over in three easy steps what has changed, what the new rules of investing are. I think you're gonna love this. And there's a great quote for you at the end. So let's do it. All right, my name is Bronson Hill. I'm not your investment advisor. Get your own independent advice. We do uh, multifamily deals like this. We also do uh, oil and gas deals, ATM machines, car washes, other things. And we create awesome videos like this. So I'd love to know, uh, you know if you wanna smash that like button, um, go ahead and smash that for us. We'll have others be able to hear about this as well. So I'm gonna get into just some of the rules that have changed. The first one that's changed really is that now it's risk on. What does it mean when it's risk on? It means that things are looking very different than they were a year or two ago. And we're seeing this especially in real estate. Now I consider myself a real estate guy. Uh, we're seeing costs go up a lot, right? You have interest costs, people that have uh, not fixed rate debt, interest costs are going up. Even if you have caps, there's costs that are going up there. We're seeing higher labor and material costs, where it's typically 30 to 50% in some areas. We're seeing insurance, property insurance go up 300 to 400%, so three to four X what it was just a year or two ago because of hurricanes in the Southeast. And so we're seeing things go up. We're also seeing rents rise, but maybe not as quickly, particularly in some markets, not rise as quickly. So it's changed quite a bit. So how have we adjusted, uh, as particularly on our real estate side, to adjust to account for that? One thing is we've done is we've really said we wanna be more conservative in the way we approach this, right? We don't just wanna have Things are gonna, you know, rent growth is gonna be really high. We might have zero rent growth or maybe even, you know, negative growth. Just see if a deal really makes sense. We have lower return projections. Great operas that I know that we're doing. Hey, we're doing deals at 14 or 15 percent projections. Now we're doing 10 to 12 percent, right? Because they're looking for things that, you know, fixed rate debt and other things, or assuming loans or things like that. Those can be really attractive deals. Um, but now, right now, there's there's higher interest rate risk. And what is that interest rate risk? Well, even with fixed debt, even if you have a building like this with fixed rate debt and you have to sell it you know, in five years or whatever period of time, you still have to look at what is the environment gonna be like when you are refinancing or when you're selling. So if you're selling, someone also has to have the ability to go get a loan to buy your property, right? So, um, and we've seen it in general, deals that were cash flowing in real estate are not necessarily cash flowing anymore. And it's really baffled a lot of investors. Hey, I thought this deal was going well, what's going on? Well, because of these higher costs, it's eaten into the cash flow quite a bit. So that's the first rule is it's risk on. The second rule is look for cash flow investments, right? Investments that actually cash flow. Right, so we've just started doing a lot of alternatives. We're doing stuff in the ATM space. Uh, we're doing uh, oil and gas, car wash, car washes, businesses themselves. We're finding things that really cash flow pretty early on. Um, the ATM deal that we've done, I've been doing it. I did it as a passive investor, and also uh, we've raised uh, over ten million dollars for it. But um, we have three investors that invested about a million dollars each, and they're basically. Uh, you know, over time they've put about $1 million each into it. They're getting uh, a payment of over $20,000 a month uh, just from the money they've put in there, which is really exceptional, right? So finding things that cash flow is really, really amazing. Um, you know, cash flow versus appreciation. We used to say multifamily deals like this one behind me, I keep pointing to it because it's uh, kind of what our background is. We would find there's a mix of cash flow and appreciation. Well, the cash flow has slowed down or maybe it's, it's, it's gone away. Uh, and really all you have left is appreciation. Now, if you compare the two with cash flow and appreciation, I would much, much prefer, and I find most investors prefer cash flow, right? And why is that? Because if you have cash flow right away, it can pay your, your mortgage, it can pay you know, your living expenses, it can pay for travel, it can pay for insurance, it can pay for all the things that you have to personally live on, right? So that's really important to have something that cash flows. Uh, Robert Kiyosaki talks about, he's like, I'm a cash flow guy, right? If it doesn't cash flow, I'm out, right? That's basically what he's got a quote that says that, hey, if, I, if this doesn't happen, then I'm out of here. And so I think it's really important to look for cash flowing investments. The third rule of uh, the new rule of investing is really cash is trash. Now, you may have heard this before, and it's not necessarily a new rule, but it's more present now. Now, inflation is officially 3%. I did a video about this recently. Um, it's around 3% year over year, which I think is total BS, honestly, because the CPI, or we call it the CPI, 
Um, they do all these things to substitute different things in there to make inflation feel better than it is so that you'll keep spending and you'll keep you know going out there and doing things that you normally do. But shadowstats.com uh, says it's actually around 10 to 12 percent if you're using the 1980 metrics. So um, we're seeing it and you're seeing it when you go to the store, you're seeing it when you go to a restaurant, you're seeing it all these different places that inflation is actually higher than what it appears to be. So um, you know still you, we're, we're losing money by holding. So cash is trash. If we're just simply holding cash then we're actually losing money, right? Uh, we're seeing also the government's continue to spend. We've got a $32, $32 trillion with a T uh, deficit. And the plan is over the next 10 years that will go to $52 trillion um, because they're going to spend you know, $2 trillion or more each year than what they actually take in. That's the plan. So it'll actually probably be higher than that. And there's all these off-balance sheet things that are happening as well. Well, how does that impact inflation? Well, um, you know, what happens is currency is actually created through debt. And the more when people loan money out, or they loan for things, it actually, or the government spends on stuff they don't have the money for, and there's a deficit, it actually creates more currency in the system. When you pay down debt, then it's actually reducing the amount of currency in the system. So as the government keeps spending, there's this incredible uh, creation of new currency that also will continue to lead to inflation. So I wanted to share this with you just to kind of sum it up. Really, right now, it's so important to pay attention. Uh, rates make a difference. You know, If you're in something that has interest rate risk, uh, watch out for that because interest rate risk really involves, hey, if I have to sell this, what's this going to look like? If I have a debt on something, what if it changes? Those are things to really pay attention to. And you know, real estate is 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 still a great long-term investment, especially if you can find uh, you know longer-term fixed rate or even lower projections. Be very conservative on that, but really expand your cash-flowing investments and find a way to get out of cash. That's really my opinion on that. Um, I want to share this quote for you <clears throat> from Peter Thiel. Peter Thiel is the famous uh, billionaire investor, and he says this, as an investor entrepreneur, I've always tried to be contrarian, to go against the crowd, to identify opportunities in places where people are not looking, right? So there's always things that are out of favor. Warren Buffett talks a lot about this too. It's like finding things that are, that are not in favor, things that are out of favor where there's value there. And you can find them in a lot of different types of places. And that's stuff that we really look for. Um, I want to share my three favorite investments outside of real estate. I mentioned a couple of them, but there's some that I did not mention. But I want you to check out this video up here where it just talks about you know the different and things that I'm finding really compelling right now. And then if you haven't joined our investment club, we're doing stuff in multifamily, oil and gas, ATM machines, car washes, other types of things. Check it out in the link below um, and join our investment club. We'll start a relationship with you. We'll let you know about our upcoming deals. But thanks for taking the time to educate yourself. Look forward to seeing you on the next video.